All right, hello everybody. Bo Heinemann back with a quick video. It's been a while since I've done one. So if you're new to my videos or if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, hello, my name is Bo Heinemann. You are now on a channel that has been here for uh, over a decade now. So congrats to me. Uh, I do a lot of reviews. You'll find reviews mostly of video games, MMORPGs, um, some tech, uh, lots of toys, podcasts, vidcasts, just all sorts of stuff over the years. It's always just been a hobby of mine, so I'm glad that I've been doing it for 10 years, since 2007. And uh, enjoy the videos. Uh, subscribe, leave comments, all that stuff like that. But today I'm talking about my latest acqu acquisition, something I've been wanting for a really long time, which is this Scope Dog Brutish Dog, which I will talk to you more in about uh, more about that in just a moment. I wanted to kind of give an update of where I've been for the last eight or nine months. It's really been busy around the Hindman household. Uh, we've had some job changes. Uh, we've had some priority changes. I've quit a few jobs. I <laughs> had three at one time. And I've just been having a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun uh, building plastic model kits, as you can see on the shelves behind me. Um, the top shelf is Gundam models, different kits like that. The middle shelf over, um, over my shoulder here, that's going to be some models, I mean, some toys from my youth, I literally went into eBay and located a lot of these toys, re you know, rebought them, enjoyed the heck out of that. Surprised at how many, every, every time I would come up with a new one, I would remember a new one. Um, and so that collection is still growing. I don't buy toys from my youth that I didn't have and don't remember. There's no point. And on my uh, other shoulder here and some of the other shelves are just random toys I've paid for and had fun with as well as on the top shelf. I actually have a lot more toys than that, but this is my office. You can't see the whole thing, but I do work in here. We have th or two desks, kind of three desks, and we work in here. Uh, we do a lot of stuff in here. We game in here, so this is getting a little crowded, so I'm trying to kind of keep my collection pared down. But as you can see from the top, I really enjoy Gundams. There's probably 20 or 30 up there. Um, I have have all sorts of videos. I'll link I'll link the playlist and everything in the, co in the uh, description of this video. But I actually won uh, the entire, at the time, the entire line of Build Fighters Try. I'm going to explain a little bit about that and explain a little bit about the models. But what I really wanted to go over today was just how much fun um, I have with plastic model kits, specifically ones from Bandai. I'll link to some that I mentioned in the video today in the comments or in the description. If you have any questions about anything you see on my shelf or whatever, just ask. I'll, I'll link it to you. I try to be helpful in that way. I try to link to videos uh, that I've made and link to products that I use. Um, and so specifically today I wanted to go over this one here which is what they would call a scope dog. Um, a scope dog is I think they're called Votums. V-O-T-O-M-S. Votums? Based on a cartoon. I've never watched a cartoon. I am not an anime fan. Um, I just don't really like how anime often treats the female characters. There's some some good female characters, for example, the pilot of this suit here. Um, but I just, I'd rather have uh, entertainment that was more well-rounded, uh, also represented more different types of people um, other than the people that it's, uh, that that anime typically represents. Just not really my bag. There's some great anime out there. Don't get me wrong. Don't leave the comments. If you want to suggest some, I'll go check it out. But um, I've just never really had time to break into that hobby. I mean, I'm busy enough for this hobby. So I build a lot of, as somebody left a comment on one of my videos the other day, for somebody who doesn't like anime, I sure have a lot of animated knickknacks. Honestly, though, most of this stuff is not anime. There's a Robotech guy right there. These are Gundam kits, but most of my toys are what you would call Western toys. Lord of the Rings, uh, Warhammer stuff from back in the 80s when I was first playing that. So I like all sorts of stuff. Now... This kit is, the reason I've been wanting this for a while is you can see how chunky it looks. I absolutely worship this kind of grunt look. If you can see my, uh, my Gundams here, they don't have all their guns and associ associated stuff. Some of them will have a lance or a knife. I really don't like um, um, plastic model kits that feature giant guns and massive bazookas. I don't really care for that stuff. What I like is a kit that looks like it's been used. I often dirty my kit ups, kits up. I usually make them look greasy or worn in. I don't often rust them because this is a futuristic material they're made out of. It wouldn't rust. I don't, they already can kind of beat rust these days. Um, but if you're interested in building one of these kits, I've made videos about that. I'll link a few of them in the description. 
But really, you can get into this hobby for $15, $20, $30 dollars and have everything you need, including a pair of nippers, which is like a cutter for to cut the things off of the, the plastic parts apart. You don't need any glue with the Bandai kits. They're snapped together. Um, I paint mine, but even when I paint them, I don't do tons of airbrush and everything. What I like to do is um, they're, they're molded in plastic colors, which I'll show you in a minute, and they really work great just as they are. Even if you just build them straight out of the box, they can look like really cool detailed uh, toys. The advantage is uh, probably the most expensive kit on that shelf there is 40 bucks. This was 45, but that's with free shipping through Amazon um, all the way from Japan. If local stores carried these, I could probably get them for a lot less. Um, but you know, the most expensive kits I've ever gotten were probably 40 something dollars. You, the more you spend, the more kit you do get. But for now, uh, the, the, for example, the latest line on that shelf, the um, Iron Blooded Orphans, which is the latest anime they've released for the for the kits. Um, those kits are ten and twelve bucks each. You can get fancier ones that are twenty and thirty, but the baseline is so cheap. Um, there's even kits out there for six to ten dollars that are really basic. So if you want to get into the hobby, get you a very basic kit. Um, get you some of the basic tools. I'll link some some of those in the descriptions. This is not a this is not a how to uh, video about these model kits. This is a celebration and an update type of video about these model kits. But get you a basic kit and just go for it. Don't worry if it looks correct or if it looks cool or whatever. Just have fun with it. Put it together and you can wind up like this guy, for example, is a straight built built kit with an extra little hand on there. I was playing with from another kit. I'm actually going to customize this for a contest. And this one's going to be made into a construction worker. The orange and stuff in black look kind of construction-y. I'm going to beat it up. It's going to have several arms. It's going to have a, a sleeping area built onto it, like a platform for the female uh, pilot who is going to kind of pilot that around. So you can do all sorts. I mean, that's just a straight-built kit, and you can see how neat it is. They're very poseable. What they do is they have these little kind of rubber um, uh, gaskets or kind of plugs in each little, in each little arm. And you can just kind of... Oops, and they're tension, so they're, they're, the tension it holds them in place. So you can move these arms into place and put them in cool poses. And if those, um, those joints kind of get loose over time, you can actually tighten them up really easy using sometimes just a little bit of glue on there it, and letting it dry. It kind of makes the joint smaller, that small layer of glue, and it'll tighten up over time. So these things can last forever. Now, will they take as much uh, kind of beading and stuff? from a kid like a regular G.I. Joe toy or something. I don't think so. They're not quite that sturdy, but they do have what they would call a ton of playability or play value um, simply because first you get the enjoyment out of building the kit. Unless the kit is bad, it's really fun to put together because you're enjoying the engineering. You're like, wow, they, they engineered and they machined these tiny little parts. I don't know if you can see that, but this is tiny little, tiny little head. It's probably not going to focus. There we go. Focus on that, please. Um, there we go. And every little part will move. It's, uh, it's just fantastic, this hobby, how much engineering and smarts goes into these little kits. It's really quite amazing. I can't wait to see what they have in 20 years. Anyway, so you build this little kit, you get the enjoyment out of that, then you get the enjoyment out if you want to play with it or handle it, what adults like me call handling. You know, you sit there and you fiddle with it, keep it at your desk, whatever. If you're a kid, you're going to play with it, you know, play battle or whatever. Um, and then you get the enjoyment of literally putting them on your shelf like you do up here and posing them. And you walk by them every day and you just look at them. Oh, cool. Or once in a while, you'll like I've shown all the kids in the neighborhood around, the, around my house. We've had barbecues around here. And they love to come in and look at the shelf and see all the toys. Um, I'm getting ready to have a visitor, my wife's friend, who will bring her five, six-year-old son. And he loves this stuff. It's fun to have him just look at him. And he can even pick him up and play with him and stuff. Um, so... You get all these layers of enjoyment out of the hobby. This one, for example, is seems like a more advanced kit. It's a large kit. A lot of the boxes are about a third this size. But what's going to be so great about this kit is I'm going to. It's kind of a pinkish color. My wife loves pink, as you can see. She put it into my hair. <laughs> she she uh, likes to do that. She loves robots and she loves sci-fi and stuff. So I'm going to I'm going to customize this for her. I'm going to put her name on the chest there, like a tattoo. It's got a female pilot. Let's see if we can see that there. Is it going to focus? Anyway, female pilot there. And I'm going to paint that up with red hair because she likes red hair. Um, and going to have a lot of fun with that. Um, there's other kits around here. I don't have it with me, but there's a bear guy. There's there's robot bears. Let me see if you can see. There we go, right behind me there. There's some robot. Oops. 
Whoop, whoop. Oh, this is really hard because it's reversed. <laughs> right there, those are like teddy bears. Uh, robot teddy bears called Bear Guys. There's a whole line of those. So anything, if you're into it for the engineering or if you're into it for the enjoyment of the anime or whatever, whatever reason you're into it, it's a lot of fun to do. Um, I'm going to show you what's inside a package real quick, what you might get for 45 bucks, And I want to address some concerns of the hobby. A lot of people will say, well, look at all this wasted cardboard and plastic. I've addressed that before. What I like to do is I've saved every one of these box covers. Every modeler I know saves these. And you can actually frame them. You can hang them up. I'm going to probably put mine into like a collage. I'm not really sure. I'm going to set that right there. And then you get the instruction packet. The instructions themselves often have some really cool colors, suggestions, stuff like that. Um, so it is all in Japanese, but don't worry if you can build a piece of IKEA furniture, you can understand these instructions. It's not a big deal. You're not going to need to worry about that. Um, being that they're snapped together, and they really do snap together well, you will, you will be surprised at how well these go together. Um, being that they're snapped together, you don't re it doesn't require any special tools. You're not going to need a saw or a drill or a screwdriver. You might need some some little extra tools, like a, you know you want to use a uh, exacto blade and stuff like that. And as you get more into the hobby, you can you can get more tools. People get airbrush equipment, whatever. I like to hand brush everything. I'm old school, um, but really this instruction book is all you need, along with the parts and along with the thing to cut the parts out, and you're good. Um, and then just let yourself have fun with it. So the instruction book is collectible in a way. I really like these instruction books. One day these are just, they look almost like comic books. They have a lot of information inside. I don't read Japanese, but they do provide some really cool painting guides, um, pictures from the anime, whatever. Just really fun to look at. Now here's where you get all into the plastic. Now this is, I've already opened this before, but this is definitely my favorite part of these model kits is just what you call a runner. That's a plastic runner, a, a sheet of plastic where they mold it. Um, you'll see some of these in four and five different colors on one runner. They, that's a technology they developed where they're able to, instead of having just all brown on one, they can put brown and clear parts. They have really amazing, um, here, let me get you one and I'm going to show you real quick what I'm talking about. All my extra kits, I have boxes and boxes of these. You get these extra runners. And you might save them and use them. For, this is what I do with a lot of these parts. I use them to customize other robots later. But there you've got a clear part, which is like a shield or a sword. Um, so they can put all of that on one runner. This is a good, good kind of example here. I'm going to set this down right here. And this kit is from 2000. It's actually that kit right there. If you can see that, I'm looking at my camera going backwards. That is my favorite kit or my favorite model. It's called a gun cannon, which is a basic kind of grunt looking suit. But this is this is 17 years old, and look at all the different colors they have on there. They have a clear, red, blue, white. So with technology, they've, they've been able to make these kits not only more advanced, but they save more and more plastic. So if you're, if you're a hippy-dippy like me and you're worried about recycling, you can save these, use them. As the parts get used up, I will actually clip off the excess plastic and then recycle it. It's just like recycling anything else. Um, the bags can be recycled. Um, you might want to ask your local law or find out with your local law about these thin bags. Some recycling places do not like you to try and recycle like a shopping bag or one of these thin plastic bags because it can gum up their recycling machinery. Um, but if that's the case, most grocery stores or Walmarts will have a recycling option bin that you can bring your um, plastic bags, all the leftovers in a big bundle, and put them in there and they recycle them for you. They take them to a special recycling area or machine. So you get all, oh, geez, you get all the different parts. And one of the best things that I like to do is you take out the parts and each one will have, let me see if I can show you. I don't know if that's going to be visible to you, but there's a little P as in Paul right there. Um, and each part will have a letter like that. So in the instruction book, when you open it, it'll say P1 or whatever. You cut off P1, you put it with the other part, whatever it's numbered. Very simple. So you simply take your lid, take these out of the plastic, put it in there, and just follow the instructions. Take your time. You can, you can do all of this on a very small desk. You don't need to do it on your dining room table. Especially don't do it on your nice dining room table if you don't have something down to protect the surface. Don't cut with an X-Acto directly on surfaces. 
be very careful with an exacto. I'll go over this more in other videos. I, in fact, I think I made one. I'll link it in the description. Just check the description um, for more uh, videos and stuff. But the funnest part is taking these out of the plastic, putting them in the lid, and just start and slowly starting. Um, when I when I I work out of my home, so when it's slow or at work or something like that, if I'm sitting there and I'm, maybe I'm waiting for something during work to process, I can literally work on these kind kind of models because they take so little space. You can cut apart, you replace the, the runner, take that part and set it down, you find the other runner, you take it out. And it sounds kind of slow, but it's very relaxing. Um, it's almost like a puzzle that has an end result that's a poseable robot. And they also have other ones as well. Uh, they have monsters, they have all sorts of stuff. You'll get stickers. I don't know if those are decals or stickers. Um, I can't really tell. I want to say those are decals or slide decals. Water slide decals are ones that you have to actually immerse in water or get wet and they slide off. They can be finicky. They can be a lot to deal with. If you don't know how to do that, look up a video on YouTube how to use water slides. Don't do them unless, until you find out. Take your time with them. But otherwise, a lot of them will come with stickers, wonderful stickers that are so cool. Um, and I have an entire drawer full of extra stickers that I use for customization. This part fell, so let me grab it. Oh, okay. This was one of, one of the real things that attracted me to this kit, other than the look of it. it. The kit is just cool looking. I mean, it's like a military grunt suit. I mean, you can see, oh, it's upside down, but you can see here. I mean, how cool looking is that? It's real chunky and heavy. They don't all look that same way. Some of them are customized differently. But if I can show you this real quick, let me see if I can get it to focus. Those are tiny rivets, actual tiny rivets. And right there, is the little wrench. You take off that little wrench and it, then you take a little rivet using the wrench, you go Bloop, and then you pop it into the armor. So it's, you, you physically, <laughs> this is so silly, but this is what I love about it. You physically use this to put physical rivets into the physical miniature armor. It's really fun. It's not as finicky as it sounds. You don't have to use the wrench. It's for fun. It kind You can use glue if you want to keep them in there. You can do whatever you want. I like to do all the gimmicks. I think that's the biggest fun of it. Um, and I take my time on that stuff as well. So why do I enjoy these kits so much? I'm going to tell you there's two things that I really enjoy about these kits and, and why. Number one, when I first, the internet really first started hitting, which let's say around later to, later 90s, early 2000s, I, see, I didn't grow up with the internet like a lot of my viewers, a lot of the people I know, a lot of the kids I know. I'm 43 years old or 42, I can't remember. Um, and so the internet to me was new. And, and even when I was discovering it, it was so slow, it was hard to shop and stuff. In the last several years, though, the internet has become so fast. Websites have become so intuitive. Apps have become so useful that going to eBay, I was able to research and find um, old toys from my youth that were just incredible. Stuff that I never, like that Chris Star guy, right? Ooh, 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 ooh. Which side am I at here? There we go. Ooh, right there. That is so hard to do. Uh, that Chris Star guy, right? real common. You can find them on eBay. But once I started investigating my the toys from my youth, I thought, am I trying to recapture that feeling that toys gave me as a youth? You know, when I they were just interesting. They were quirky. I got a lot of offbeat kind of knockoff toys, you know, cheaper toys, and I just loved them. And when I got them again, it was neat to remember how they physically felt and everything. But I, it didn't awaken that feeling in me again. And I wasn't really after that. Frankly, I'm happy in my life. I don't need that feeling. But when I started building these toys, these plastic model kits that are dirt cheap, and when I really started discovering that they were widely available for dirt cheap on Amazon and eBay, and now in a local hobby store called Hobby Town, look up your local Hobby Town. They're fantastic. Um... That started giving me that same feeling. Like, it's really interesting. I really feel like a kid again when I'm assembling these these, and when I'm putting them together. It really is a nice feeling. So even though I didn't think I was trying to recapture that kind of youthful excitement for a plastic package, um, it, it was awoken in me anyway. So that's a very interesting thing that happened. Number two, um, if you're like me and you're socially aware, or you're socially conscious, or at least you like to consider yourself, you're married to somebody who's, who's politically aware, a wonderful woman who is smart and beautiful and all that stuff like that, um, especially with the last year with the election and everything that went on where, where you just couldn't believe that it went that way, um, you know, 
and and th that's coming from a guy who looks like me and who was born in America and speaks English. So I can't imagine what it's like to not look like me and to be somebody who's really uh, who's really feeling under the gun right now. Um, but it's stressful. You start to feel a little depression. You know, you read the news so much, you start to go, "Oh man, this is horrible." You know, what are we coming to? You, you really start to to feel that. And even though I think that I'm a pretty stress-free guy, I enjoy yoga. I exercise. I have a wonderful uh, a wife and dogs and everything is great. When I started to assemble these kits, I, I realized they were actually relieving a type of stress I didn't know I had, which was kind of a fiddly stress, a stress that was relieved only with using my hands and working with my hands and letting my imagination kind of soar um, and, uh, you know, doing all these custom ones down there where I actually put different arms on them and paint them and add my own kind of look and feel to them because I'm an artist. I'm a writer. I've always been a creative person. If I'm not doing something creative, hello, doggy. Um, I get, I, I literally will just kind of go nuts, you know, and in the house, it get, I start to get stir crazy. And so this has given me a real good way to continue creative, uh, efforts, uh, other than writing and art and music and stuff like that. And, and, and with the result that I can give away or I can enjoy or, um, that also awaken that childlike kind of feeling me. So it's a really interesting hobby. I'd say if you're interested in getting into it, just do it. Don't worry about how, your age or what. If you have kids, do some with them. It's similar to Lego, but what I'm finding with Lego is a lot of every parent that I meet who has a child who is into Lego, the first thing they tell me is, my God, those things are expensive. And then they get the kit. It was 80 something dollars. They build it exactly to the box's specifications. And then they display it or whatever, or they wreck it, and they just kind of go on their way. Every Lego-obsessed kid I've ever known, and I could be wrong about your particular Lego-obsessed kid, really um, doesn't use them in the same way. They build it, they kind of go on. It's kind of a toy you grab once in a while. These are not only much cheaper than Lego, for the price of an expensive Lego kit, $80, $100, I can get like four of these things, some really nice ones, or two really big ones. Um, you know, for that price, you can get something that you can assemble, you can display, you can customize, you can swap parts, you can do whatever you want with them because a lot of the parts are universal. So it's a pretty brilliant hobby. I, you know, if, if your kid's into anything like robots or science or sci-fi, or if not, if he or she or they want to try a new hobby, try this sometime. Um, it's a really fun kit. Just be very careful with the X-Acto blades and the nippers, which are the little pliers uh, i'll link some down in the description just be careful with all that stuff i've cut myself and i'm a grown-up and i'm very careful and it's not good so don't leave your kid alone with that stuff or at least educate them on how to use them correctly so anyway that's just some more about where i've been what i've been doing my new kits uh how i've been enjoying the new kits if you have any questions or concerns uh about my videos please leave it in the comment section subscribe i'll probably start doing some more of these diary kind of videos because I'm just not in the mood to do the fully edited stuff anymore. I'm too busy for all that. So if you want to see me cover any type of other thing, go for it. I have playlists of Gunpla in my playlist section uh, if you want to see the rest of my Gunpla videos. But thank you everybody for uh, watching. I'll see you soon. I'm going to go start on this guy after I start dinner. So have a good one everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye.